Doc Talk is brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Triangle Vaccines. Triangle, protection you can trust. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here from Doc Talk. Man, I'm glad you joined the show today. We're gonna have a great show. We have Dr. Tiffany Lee gonna join me and we're gonna discuss cattle comfort. And I know that sounds like pillow tops and, and, and throw rugs, but what we're talking about are things that we can control mud, heat, and different environmental conditions. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. must be a, uh, an inherited trait because I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. And it's interesting as I have grandchildren now, little bitty ones, all they want to do is go to the barn, swing a rope and be a cowboy. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we have, the way we make a living obviously, but it's really more than that. It gives us the opportunity as a family to be able to work together and enjoy each other's company and make a living at the same time. We've been using Triangle for years, uh, and the reason we do it's been safe and effective, and we're going to continue to do that. We'll put the cows in the chute twice a year, spring and fall. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Hey there, folks. Welcome to Doc Talk. Tiffany, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. We have Dr. Tiffany Lee, who's a veterinarian and works here at the Beef Cattle Institute at Kansas State University doing research and field events and outreach and many different things, but uh, has practice experience from uh, Northeast Kansas originally. Yes, Leavenworth. And, yep, and a Kansas State alum. And, and we're going to talk today about cattle comfort. And, you know, I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there, but, you know, when cattle comfort equals production. It equals efficiency. And when we don't have it, we don't have efficiency. Exactly, exactly. And I think we also don't have adequate animal welfare at times. Uh, you know, when we talk about things like pen conditions, mud is a big factor in that. And when you have cattle that are slogging through mud just to get to water, you know, you have problems and sometimes that's an animal welfare issue. Now, mud cannot be avoided. We're outside and, and you know, it rains. So, yeah. We can't avoid it, but we can do some things to help prevent cattle wading through knee-deep mud just to get to their food. Yep, so. and I was raised in southwest Iowa, and if there's one thing that I understood was mud and getting the boots sucked off your feet walking through the lot. So, like you said, mud's going to happen, but what are some of the things that producers can do when when we have those adverse rainfalls or those those uncharacteristic rainfalls that there's something we need to do. Sure. I think prevention is probably the the key thing that you need to do. You know, using adequate pen maintenance, sloping of pens, uh, things like that. You always want to make sure that at least the areas around your water tanks and your feed bunks are clear of mud. If they have to wade through mud that's over about four inches above their fetlocks, that's definitely a, not something that we want to have to deal with. And again, we always want to have the cattle have a place, a dry, clean place to lie down. And what's the best way for that in feed yard situation? I think pen maintenance is the best thing. Um, not mounds, just mounds, the mound. mounds are very good. Um, you know, making sure that you have adequate manure harvesting, building those mounds, and then even when the cattle are not in the pens, maintenance needs to be done. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that we had when when I was in practice is we developed standard operating procedures so that we had a constant maintenance of our pen floors, constant mapping to make sure we were getting rid of low spots, and then that mound building, which as we'll talk about with some of the heat stress, not only does it give them a dry place to lay down in the, in the winter and, and spring and fall, but it gives them a place to get up above and catch a, a breeze in yes. the summer. Yes, definitely. Um, and you know, the, in the winter time, that's it's not necessarily that, you know, they may not necessarily need a breeze, but it gives, that mound again gives them a clean, dry place when you have lower evaporative conditions and you have m mud in those lower spaces. Absolutely. And I think that, that keeping your mounds, or keeping your, your, your aprons around the bunks clean so that cattle, they're kind of like us, 
if it's not easy to do, they don't do it. Mm -hmm. And so you want them at the bunk. Exactly. But we don't want that to be the only place that they go lay down either. Yes, yes. We definitely don't want them laying around the bunk. That, you know, if cattle are laying around the bunk, a lot of them won't eat just because other cattle are in the way. They yep. don't want to move. They don't want to do anything. And then the cattle that are kind of left out are the ones that are probably not eating as much as those cattle are already up there anyway. And so then you've got some problems with those ones not eating as, as much as they should. You bet. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, more with Dr. Tiffany Lee here on Doc Talk. We're glad you joined us, and we'll see you here after the break. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. Meet the Veterinarian, brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Dr. John Kellenberger joined Ashland Veterinary Center in 1996 and became a partner in 2003. AVC cares for large and small animals and serves a four-state area. Dr. Kellenberger received his BS in Animal Science and Industry and DVM degrees from Kansas State University. He and his wife Angie are proud parents of three children and enjoy the company of nine dogs, five cats, and five horses. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for Merck Animal Health. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Tiffany Lee, and we're from the Beef Cattle Institute at Kansas State University, and we're talking about cattle comfort. And as we left, we we're talking about mud. And and one of the things that I found with mud, uh, Tiffany, was that we kind of get into this locked, paralyzed indecision that if we can't clean the whole pen, we do nothing. But you know, sometimes just hooking onto that box blade, making one lap around the pin in the times of adverse rainfall or in the winter to just give them a comfortable place until we can get to the point of cleaning the whole pin. Yep. That, that does a world of difference. It provides them a clean, dry place to lay so that they're not making huge mud holes at certain places, like around the bunk, um, and they're, they're maintaining a clean, dry area, you know, for them to be comfortable in. Yep. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll move on, but uh, I always remember the dairyman saying that a cow that's laying down is a cow that's making milk, and in the beef industry, a steer that's laying down is one that's making beef. That so, is true. So, heat stress yes. is another issue that we have during the summertime, and you know, it's not a Canadian issue, but it's, it is, once you get south of I-70 or, or east with the humidity, yes. can, can be a big issue. Um, talk to me a little bit about, you know, what are some of the signs that cattle are, are going through heat stress? 
you know, a, a big sign that cattle are going through heat stress and everybody's probably witnessed it is respiration rate, panting scores. We, we actually have studies that have been done on, on different panting scores and how they relate to the heat stress and actually that's a very good indicator of whether cattle are, are feeling the stress or not. Um, so that's, that's a huge thing. Um, whether cattle are, are bunched up around that water tank, that's a big indicator um, of whether they're heat stressed or not. And, you know, that's one thing where we could definitely, um, I guess, look at heat stress um, from a prevention standpoint, just make sure that they have cl clean, potable water so that they can stay hydrated during those Yeah, and you get into some of those big cattle. I used to just take the big silver tank and put it in the corner of the pen with a water tank or balls or gun and fill those up mm -hmm. to just give more linear square footage yeah. of, of cattle that are, that are, you know, in trouble or, or cattle that are suffering from, from heat stress. Um, when you when you start to think about heat stress, you know the the first thing I think of is first of all, you know the thermal heat index, mm -hmm. and and as temperature stays stagnant or stays put and humidity goes up, we we have more heat index on those cattle. Mm -hmm. What's one of the first things you need to do when when you when you start to see elevated heat index? Well, I think one of the first things that you need to do is make sure that you have adequate pen space and an adequate mound so that those cattle you know, can get up off the ground into uh, a breezy situation. Because when you talk about your, um, your temperature humidity index, uh, one big part of that is wind as well. Yep. And, and take, down the, take down your uh, wind blocks from the winter. <laughs> yes, And definitely. mow the weeds. That's a big thing, yes, yeah. Now, uh, those wind blocks, some people might think that they provide some shade. Uh, most of the time, that's not the case, and uh, you're gonna do more harm than good as far as preventing all that wind, that air from reaching those cattle. Cool, well, we gotta take another break. Okay. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about pen space since we're on that. Yeah. And, and one of the big things, folks, when you get that thermal heat index up, cease and desist working cattle. Don't wanna run through the, through the process and shoot. We'll be back after the break. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Hey there folks, welcome to today's BQA Tip of the Day. Today we're gonna to talk about injection sites. The first thing, location of that injection. We wanna make sure that we go in the target area of the neck, that's the triangle with the vertebral column, the point of the shoulder, and above the jugular vein. After we look at the location, we want to select the proper needle. I use 16 and 18 gauge needles most all the time for all injections of cattle. For sub-Q injections, I will use a 5 8 inch needle or a half inch needle. For IM or intermuscular injections, we'll use a one inch to inch and a half needle. Sub-Q injections should be administered at a 45 degree angle and the IM will be perpendicular straight into the neck of the calf. That is today's BQA tip of the day. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. <coughs> The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. In the springtime, cattlemen need to be thinking of preventing important diseases like pink eye. Pink eye prevention includes management factors like good fly control, pasture management, along with a good vaccination program. Eyesight from AgriLabs has broad efficacy coverage as its origin from eight different field isolates of Moraxella bovis. It is safe, smooth, highly syringable, safe with young calves and pregnant cows, and provides superior protection against pink eye. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet, 
True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification (EID), electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hey, folks! Welcome back to Doc Talk. It's Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Tiffany Lee, and we're from the Beef Cattle Institute at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, and we're talking about something that's vitally important to beef production and beef cattle health and that is cattle comfort. And, and when we talk about cattle comfort, we're talking about comfort in the pen, the ability to express normal behavior, um, you know, and, and to stay comfortable from the elements. And so let's talk about pen space because it is one of those things that we assess mm -hmm. on, the, on the BQA assessment tool. So what, what exactly, when you're looking at pen space or if I'm walking out to my pens to make sure I'm providing adequate pen space, what, what are some of the things you're looking at? I like to go out and make sure that every single head of cattle in there has adequate room to get up and have its own place to lay down, walk around and exhibit normal behaviors. That is what I'm looking for. Make sure that they all have enough space to do that. Yep, and, and I think we can even take it a step further with provide, if you're going to build mounds, you should provide a mound that all the cattle can get on. I agree. Because then the ones that don't get on the mound are those lighter, mm -hmm. more frail animals mm -hmm. and, and, and they, they wind up getting pushed out. Yep. Speaking of the lighter, more frail animals, you know, bunk space is another yes. issue within the pen. Yes. And you know, it's my rule of thumb mm -hmm. is on high risk calves. I want them all to be able to get up to the bunk at once. Definitely, yes. Um, you know, your your lighter calves that come into the feedlots, they're not quite used to the bunk maybe yet, or um, you you know, they're they're not quite used to being on a, a feedlot diet. You definitely want all of them to go up, be able to go up to the bunk at once and get full at once, uh, so that they all know you know what they're doing when they go on to a finisher ration. You bet. Um, what about slope and drainage in, in pen space? I mean, you, you alluded to that at the beginning when we were talking about mud, sure. but, but you know, what, you know, talk to me a little bit about the positives of, of slope. Okay. Well, with your slope, you definitely want the slope to be away from your apron, um, and that's because you want the most drainage at the places where they're going to, where you want them the most, where they, they are going to eat, basically. Um, you want to provide adequate drainage so you don't have mud in areas where they want to eat or where they want to drink or where they want to lay down. Um, if you have, have adequate slope that provides enough drainage so that they can do all three of those things in a clean, dry area. High traffic areas, folks, are, are really important that you get out every year, look around your water tanks. You know, there's nothing worse than, than dropping off the face of the earth right at the water tank where the calves have 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 spent a lot of time and a lot of traffic and that's where your wear and tear on your pins is going to be so making sure you haul some rock in you know we're so busy worrying about hauling stuff out yep. sometimes we have to haul some some things in True. on pin space yes. you know wh what are we looking at there's a lot of range isn't sure. there? sure oh yeah and your range really depends on kind of where you're at in the country um, dr dan and i were talking before and you know we like to see a little bit less pens. You, you can get, I guess you can have a little bit less pen space in the more dry, arid regions of the country, um, and you know you can have a little bit more pen space in the wetter areas of the country. So. Well, let's take a break and we come back. We'll put some numbers to it and sure. we'll wrap up the show. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We'll be back after the break. Hi there, folks. Dr. Dan from K State. Are you BQA certified? Well, if not, you should be. If you work with beef cattle in any aspect, whether it's cow, calf, stalker, or feedlot, or if you work in an auction market, if you're a 4-H or an FFA member, or if you're ancillary to the beef industry, it's something that you need to do and become familiar with. Beef Quality Assurance has been around for over 25 years and it serves as a cornerstone of education to help producers identify management processes that can be improved. Not only have those that are involved with the beef industry embraced BQA because it's the right thing to do, they have also gained through increased profitability. Traditionally, BQA training is offered face-to-face -face through your state coordinator, and it still is. But today, you can also have this educational opportunity, which can be obtained through the Beef Quality Assurance online training provided by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. Go to the website, bibi-bqa.com, 
where you can register and become BQA certified at no cost to you between now and October 31st. Also, if you register and become certified between now and October 31st, you can also be entered into a drawing to win some great prizes, including a tailgate package valued at $500. It's a great program. It's been around for almost three decades. It's a cornerstone to safe, wholesome, affordable beef. It's Beef Quality Assurance. Get certified today. You know just how costly BRD can be. But did you know that bacteria like Mannheimia and Pasteurella can cause BRD? That's why veterinarians and cattle raisers focus on preventing pasteurlosis with a quality vaccine like Pulmogard PHM-1. It's ready to use, highly syringable, and provides comprehensive protection with a single dose. For pasteurlosis protection that's truly the head of the class, ask your veterinarian about Pulmogard PHM-1. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook. Specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle, Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk, Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Tiffany Lee, and we are veterinarians here at the Beef Cattle Institute at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And, you know, when we talk about pen space, when you're in arid regions like West Texas, Eastern Colorado, Western Kansas, you know, we can get away with 150, 250 square foot of, of pen space per head. But when you get into Southwest Iowa uh, on outdoor facilities, open air facilities where, where the elements are not blocked, we're not talking about barn situations, um, you know, now you're talking 500, 700 square foot provided the more mud you have in your geographic region, the more pen space you have to provide cattle so that they have adequate places to lay down and, and stay dry. Sure. All right, Tiffany, you've been working some with the Beef Quality Assurance Program. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about how all this plays into the new uh, welfare assessment or the, the BQA assessment tool for feedlots. Sure. So our BQA assessment tool, I think it's a great tool. It's a self-evaluation tool. So that's the biggest thing. It's not an audit or anything like that where you're going to get punished for having someone come out here and look at your facility. It's something that you can use as a tool to improve your facility. And what we evaluate on these assessments are things like pen conditions, um, the way that you, you know, handle your heat stress, along with other things um, such as processing, um, handling, and things like that. Yeah, and you know, I've done quite a few of these assessment tools, mm -hmm. and like you said before, this the difference between an audit and an assessment. An audit is a bean counter coming in saying yes or no, you do this or you don't. Yeah. An assessment is something that a veterinarian can work with with their producer and walk through, and as you see something that you want to have corrective action, mm -hmm. let's talk about yeah. it. Let's just, let's plan it. Let's fix it. Let's make it better for for the, the cattle. and, sure. and uh, that's a lot different than, than audits, I think, are built on distrust between groups, mm -hmm. and assessments are, are building blocks and bridges towards improving animal welfare. I agree. I very much agree. And I think that this not only builds a better, a better facility for your, your facility, I think it builds a relationship with your veterinarian um, and a re relationship with your clients as well. Yeah. I think the, you know, the, when I think of, of BQA, I think the thing that makes me the most proud about that document is that it is a document written by veterinarians and producers for veterinarians and producers to, to improve the, the welfare and the health of the animals. Yes, I agree. I would definitely agree. Um, I think that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great tool to use. 
and I hope that we can, you know, pretty much get every every producer to to at least try to use it and, and try to work with their veterinarian um, to improve not only their facility, but it'll help us improve the industry as a whole. Well, I sure appreciate you being on the show Thank today. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Yeah. And we appreciate you watching Doc Talk. If you'd like to learn more about what Tiffany and I do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember, we always recommend that you work with your local practitioner. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. Thank you very much for joining us today on Doc Talk, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Triangle Vaccines. Triangle, protection you can trust.